We got King of the Fourth Quarter, aka Kenny Beach, aka Kenny for real. The NBA GM survey is interesting. You know, every year NBA comes out with the GM survey, GM vote on who's the best player and and uh uh, uh who has the most problems in future and stuff like that. And then, you know, say the season start on Tuesday. Shout out to you know the NBA season's right around the corner when the NBA GM survey comes out. We gotta react because there were some crazy things said. And this is always my favorite of them all because these are the 30 people that we trust to build our favorite team to be good. Like, they have to be the smartest in the room. At least they, they're supposed to be, right? And I'm not saying they're not. But there are some things in here that I see to be kind of, kind of wild. So you can go back and look at everything. But some of these owners, bro, their bosses, I, I feel for them because some of the owners, bro, the owners are the bosses of GMs, and some of the owners don't know nothing about basketball. <laughs> they just own the team just to own it. But they got so much money. Survey from all the way in 2000. 2002, which is crazy. So shout out to John Schumann, who's been give, giving it uh, his all this whole time. Shout out to him, man. This is always really fun. Is the NBA saying that these are the six faces of basketball? Mm -hmm. uh, no, they're not. All right. So the first one is probably the easiest one. Which team will win the finals? Majority of people, 83%. 83%? Dang! They don't even believe in their own team. They don't believe in their own team. Who's going to win the finals? Who's going to win the 2025 NBA finals? Are you the Celtics? Bro, you're the G the thunder what the hell well you can you vote for your own team oh, i guess the gms couldn't vote for their own team or they could they if they could that's crazy y'all crazy y'all just gave up before the season even started that's crazy i already made a video talking about the celtics but in that i said that they are the best team in basketball it is so hard to go back to back so i am trying to figure out if it's not when the last team go back to back the warriors 2018 warriors when the last team three i think it was kobe the lakers shack <laughs> And I might be going OKC as well. And a lot of that has to do with them finding oh, some more playoff wounds, right? We've seen Shea in the playoffs as the number one guy a few different times now. J-Dub's first playoff appearance. Chet's first playoff appearance. And now they get one of the best winners in basketball as far as his individual impact. And Alex Caruso, Isaiah Hardenstein being on the team. Like, this is a super well-constructed roster. Super team! At the top of it. Like, you have pretty much all of the recipe with a good coach, good defense, top five player. There's no real holes as of right now other than the rebounding. We, we get really to see it. If you compare the Celtics and the Thunder, bro, they got a superstar. They got a tall white dude that can shoot. They got a dude named Jalen. They got all them a defensive player. They got all them. That that it could be Boston and Oklahoma City, but hopefully it's not. <laughs> we don't want that. Stephen A. Smith don't even want that. He don't want to go no Boston or Oklahoma City. Number two team as well. The Boston Celtics get 3% of the vote, which equates to a single vote. So shout out to him. Who's going to win the MVP? I think it's I also agree with. Because no. That's what I think about. Ja. Where's Ja? Where's Ant? Is Ant on the list? Where's Ant? Uh oh, he also received votes. But still, he should be higher up. And uh, uh, Spidey, where's Spidey at? He got that max. You know he gonna take his game to the next level. P. I ain't pause the video. This is something I also agree with because this is what I think about it. Luka Doncic not having an MVP at this point in his career is extreme. It's crazy. It's let's be real. It's crazy. He's been All NBA first team for 100 years in a row. He's not the one seed. He's always widely renowned as the best point guard of one of the two best point guards in basketball. He's not his team. Not decent. His team is decent in the regular season. So this feels like That's why. a year, but I, the reason why I don't think yeah, I get first in the West is because I do believe that their OKC team might be so regular season dominant, and with Shea being the efficient scorer that he is, that you add the regular season success and averaging 30 ish. Like, that's the recipe to win in uh, NBA, NBA MVP, even though I do believe that Luka's long, long overdue. A GM out there was like Jalen Brown. <laughs> that's so interesting. Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown. Brown. Brown's going to win it. That's, that's probably uh, uh, the so Celtics GM. This, now, we never will because I think that GMs are basically say, I don't want to do it anymore if we got receipts. But what GM was like Jalen Brown? Like, I understand. Finals MVP, sure, sure, sure. But regular season MVP on that team is going to be hard. Hey, well, Tat Tatum ain't been able to do it either. It's going to be hard with all that talent to get a regular season MVP. And then at least one person said the same thing about Anthony Edwards. It should be higher. And next, if you're starting a franchise and you could sign anybody, who would it be? I knew this was going to happen. It was going to be Victor. Of course. He is the unicorn. Of course. I'm sorry. He is the alien. Um, Jokic was last year. A lot of years has been Braun. We've got a car Anthony Towns year throughout history. Wimby feels like the best bet as far as like the overall upside. He could potentially this year be like a top 10 player. But you also do get like Shays, the Jokic's, the Luka's also getting a vote. Which player forces opposing coaches to make the most adjustments? Luka! Taking this one. 
Uh, last year it was Steph Curry, and I remember I remember talking about that, which again I respect and understand. But it was surprised to me that Luca wasn't that high last year. This year they was like, hey, we don't really have, we can't go into a game against the Dallas Mavericks without talking about exactly what we're doing to defend this brother. Um, so he is number one, and Steph Curry is still number two. He just drops ten percent. <laughs> ain't that big of a deal. This is what things get kind of interesting to me. Breakout player, Jay Dub. Jay Dub. Mobley makes sense after the playoffs. How can we say Ja Moran is about to have a breakout? This is this crazy. Is this is crazy. Same first, te second team All NBA, two time All Star. Come on now, been to the second round of playoffs. So a breakout. See what's a bring me comeback? You mean comeback? Not a breakout. He already had a breakout season. Comeback. Comeback. There's a difference. Come on, GMs. Y'all know better. Said John ja Morant breakout. He's been all NBA already. Yeah. He's literally been all NBA. We talk about him breaking out. He was number seven in MVP his last real healthy season. Breakout. Again, he didn't play last year really. So I'm. I guess that plays a part in it, but it wouldn't even be a breakout. If John Morant was the exact same player as he was two years ago or slightly better than that, that's not a breakout to me. That's so wild that some GMs is like, yes, yeah, John Morant. He literally is one most improved player already, y'all. Even though he probably shouldn't. I ain't going to be honest with you. I'm gonna be honest with you. He probably shouldn't have won. He should have went to his teammate Desmond Bain, but that's just a crazy one for me. I think Paolo is not a crazy guess or a crazy vote in, but he's coming off an all-star year, so a breakout for him would mean that He's in conversations for MVP team player. Yeah, I guess that's not out of the realm of possibility. But in my mind, when I think about breakouts, I think about the dudes that have not made an all star appearance just yet or haven't been the number one option on a playoff team or something like that. I really like the Brandon Miller pick. Y'all saw the video. I am really invested in the Charlotte Hornets for better or for worse this season. So the Brandon Miller pick makes you got the Hornets this season. Next, we get best point guard in basketball. These things. Oh, well, they got a new coach. See what he's he cooking up. Probably about a whole bunch of nothing. I can agree that Luka Doncic is the best point guard in basketball. I think they got these top four pretty right. Now, things get so stupid here. Yeah. There's like I see Stephen Curry. Steph Curry ain't no point guard, baby. Say no. I mean, shooting guard, baby. Say no shooting guard, baby. People don't understand that with the GM survey, they don't give you this and say, check the box. This is a write-in thing. So, some GM out there thinks that Shea Gilgis Alexander is a, is a shooting, shooting guard. guard. Some GM out there thinks that Steph, Steph Curry is a shooting guard. guard. Knowing damn well, this is what year 14, 15 for Steph Curry? Y'all still saying that he's a shooting guard? He's a shooting guard. He's a shooting guard. That's one of them older GMs. He can't be a point guard. He shoots too damn much. Yup. That's one of them old, yep, old ass GMs, bro. I don't want to adapt to anything or nothing. Oh, yeah. He shoots the ball too much. He's a shooting guard. Say, he shoots the ball too much. He's a shooting guard. No point guard of mine is averaging 30 points a game. Never. Never that. Never that. He wants the Steve Nash of the world, the Tony Parkers of the world. That, those are his point guards. Those are his point guards. It's got to be one of the old heads, bro. Now, none of the new GMs yep. are, under, are saying that he's a shooting guard. And even Luka Doncic being the shooting guard makes sense at least a little bit because Kyrie Irving is on the team and he's traditionally a point guard. So I, I guess I'll give a pass to the 7% of people that say Luka. But these two dudes, I don't see an argument for either of these two dudes to be a shooting guard. Unless you're saying Josh Giddey was the one last year? Ah, uh, no thank you. Small four gets even crazy. Small four. How does Luka get small four? Luka has got votes in point guards. Ah, I, I, probably, I probably looked at his height and said, oh, he's 6'8". He, he a small four. He's 6'8", six, 6'7". Six, he a small four. Even though he played point guard, he a small four. <laughs> small four it's kind of like the Ben Simmons situation. Yeah, he's a, he plays point guard, but he's 6'10", so he a power forward. Somehow he's a better small four. Oh, gems. What, what, what are we doing? Uh, Jason Tatum being there makes sense to me. Um, but I also think that that position is just a bit weird because I would classify Tatum as a four man nowadays. You think about their normal star lineup where it is Holiday and White as the guards, Jalen Brown and Tatum. Again, it's interchangeable positions don't really exist, but I kind of look at Tatum more as a four. Same thing with Kevin Durant and LeBron in my mind. They've transitioned to the point where they're fours. When you think about the star lineup for the Phoenix Suns, what's going to be Tyus Jones, Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, KD and Nurk. Who's that? He playing barely Bill, a small Beal. four. Or even LeBron James. I mean, you can maybe argue that Rui Hachimura is the four. But for the most part, I see these dudes as, as four men myself. But the real best four in basketball is Giannis Adetokounmpo. I don't think there should be a vote for anybody else, honestly. And al almost, he got a unanimous vote last year. But they're saying Kevin Durant. And then you got like Anthony Davis, who is a five man, in my opinion. Draymond Green is still a four, but he is nowhere near the best power forward in basketball in 2024. Are we being real? He's <laughs> 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 yeah, nowhere near the best basketball player. 
say that powerful. I love the internet because I can figure that out. I can say, <laughs> I can do one Google search and figure out if Demonte Sabonis played a single minute at Power Four this year. Nope. One one hundred percent. Cool. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It does look like he played at least one possession as the four this year. So yeah, that, that's enough to get him that best power forward in the league's title. I like that. They had a defensive rating in that one possession. No, Baby Sabo. But regardless of a 146. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now he hasn't really played the four since he was in Indiana. Like his whole Sacramento career. No, he ain't was OKC. When the rest won that MVP, he was a rookie. He, he played the four. He came off the bench, I think. Nah, that's my four, man. They even got Wimby as the four. And he did play a lot of four last season with he uh, did? Zach Collins as the five. Oh. Eventually, they got rid of that. And that's when he started to look even more amazing. Best center in the basketball is still Jokic. But Wimby getting 3% of the vote is really just one vote. So there's one GM out there that thinks that Wimby is a better basketball player. To and Jokic and MB. Can't get there yet. Maybe one day. Cannot get yeah, there that GM. Yeah, it's probably, probably the Spurs GM. GM. It's probably the Spurs GM. Percentage of total votes per position. Jokic, of course, huh? got all of that. Cool. This is what we're talking about the off seasons. You do see OKC get... The Caruso and Hardstein. season Again, I would agree there. Which player acquisition will be the biggest impact? I can PG, Paul get well soon. He's going to be the single most impactful player movement dude of the season where he turns Philly from like, oh, they, they decent. They could maybe do something. So like, oh, snap, you got to take this team extremely seriously. I like that. The most underrated will be Alex Caruso going to OKC. But then you got like... You know, KCP, okay. IHAR, Tyce Jones was a good one. IHAR. <laughs> Chris Paul. And I like, I like this GM. Whoever said Caleb Martin, because he's thinking outside the box. Do I agree? Lord knows I don't. But I, I like that this man is thinking. That might have been Daryl Morey himself patting him on the back. We got Caleb Martin for a steal. Most improved team has got to be the Grizzlies. Yes, sir. They won't be the most injured team in NBA history. Even Hopefully. They already have a Jaron injury. A Vince Williams injury. Hey, hey, and then hey, Gigi Jackson injury. Hey, hey, hey. John Morant turned his ankle last night. Hey, so. hey, 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 <laughs> hey, 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 hey. They're fine. They're fine. They're fine. They're fine. They're fine. They're fine. Okay. Okay. All right. And also, opening night. I think. I think they play the Jazz on opening night. They'll be ready to go. Trust and believe that. Philly was a Jaren and Ja. Jaren and Ja. Gigi. I think he's out for like two more months. Get well soon. Last year. And um, Vince Williams, I think he's out probably about like so six more weeks to get well soon. They were with 31 and 8 when Joel Embiid played. So assuming that Joel Embiid is healthy, they should jump up the standards quite a bit. Most surprising move undoubtedly has to be Carl yep. Towns to New York because that literally came out of nowhere. Like for Carl sure, to Philly, we were kind of right in that. We already knew that said, he's probably going to the Clippers. Who has cap space? The 76ers do. He's going to the 76ers. DeMar DeRozan to Sacramento was kind of murmured a little bit. For mm, nah, it was a surprise to me. Bridges it was a surprise. That should be second place. DeMar DeRozan to Sacramento should be second place. The cat to the Knicks. Or some people actually expect the cat to go to and to get traded to the Knicks. Everyone's talking about, oh, they can't keep Carl anytime because he makes too much money. And a salary cap, you got to trade him. You know, you know what I'm saying? You can't trade Gobert because no one won his contract. <laughs> <laughs> you can't trade over No one won this contract. You gotta trade Cat. You ain't trading Ant. <laughs> you the star player. You the franchise. He's the president of the future. As well, I guess that Leon Rose just do things under the table. Nobody's even thinking about it until it's done. But this is my favorite. I, I think I've said that about a couple different categories. But when we talk about the rookies and stuff, like they'll take Gobert. There's no one in his contract. Who win the rookie of the year? It's Reed <laughs> Shepherd with half of the vote. Reed Shepherd. I think a lot of that has to do with he looked like the best rookie. In summer league, like he did at least those first couple games, like oh my god, him at number three is that too low? Was that too low for him? And I understand it. He's got a lot of people he's competing with from Amin Thompson to Fred Van Vliet to Jalen Green to so on and so he's, forth. He's just this player like the my career story on 2K25. Oh, we gotta start you off on the bench. If we don't play favorites here, you gotta perform to be in the starting lineup. Once you perform with five times, you can be in the starting lineup. He's, he's on his story gonna be like the 2K25 my career story. I do believe because he is so good right now, he's going to make his way into that rotation. When you're that talented with that type, type of coach that wants to win every single game, no matter how young you are. You Zach Eddie's going to win rookie of the year. I'm not mad to Zach Eddie. All you got to do is stand in front of the room, bro. You're 7'5", seven, seven, 302 pounds. Come on. Out of all of the rookies in this class, he's the one that will have some of the most opportunity, at least early on, because yeah. it, it seems like they're going to start him in Memphis. I also think that Alex Sarr is going to get a lot of opportunities, but he only received the vote. But as you see, the first overall pick – Zachary Richesay, 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 Richesay uh, got zero votes as the rookie of the year, which I thought was interesting. Last year, they thought Wimby was 50%. There were 50% of the league that was like, ah, do we believe in him? You should have.
Best rookie in five years, Reed Shepard with 43% of the vote. Stephon Castle with seven. See what happens when you can shoot the ball, kids? Kid Zachary. GMs love you. Atlanta. Bub Carrington gets All because of Steph Curry. Alex Sarr. Matas Muzelis. Woo, 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 woo. Donovan Klingon, Ron Holland. And then Dalton Connect got at least a vote. Now, this is always my favorite part because now that we can go back. The neck dude. Let's see how often these GMs are right. And I'm only going surface level. I, I know they're going to be like second round picks. Like nobody was thinking about Jokic in his draft class. You feel me? But like for the most part, five years from now, about 70% of people said Zion. Him and John Morant were the top two. That feels about right. Unless I'm really forgetting somebody in this class. I don't know. We move on to the next one. This is where they got it wrong. Luka only had 17% of the vote, while DeAndre Aiden had 27% of the vote. And now of all of these dudes, I mean, Marvin Bagley and Kevin Knox both got votes and they are... Out of, the out, the league. League. out of the league, no disrespect. Oh man, out the league. Oh, he's, he's in Orlando. Then the year before that, 24% of GM said Josh Jackson. He thought Lonzo Ball was gonna win it. Damn, it's not an amazing track record, but you do see 21% of people saying, Yeah, Tatum is probably gonna be that dude. I like that. Year before that, Ben Simmons, 70% of the vote. He ain't played this year though, but he's right. He's right. Three point. <laughs> Never mind, they were wrong. Three percent, but this is. They thought Chris Dunn's on. Who won rookie of the year? Brockton. He was in the second round. Weird, because Joel B. This was his rookie season, but he was drafted the year before that. Ben the John St. Murray was still, yep. Sense, and that's what it was looking like until all of the injuries and all the other stuff. Now we get to Carl Town. They loved him. They love him. You know, these GMs loved Carl Towns five years ago. Who who would you want to build a franchise around? Carl Towns. Carl Towns. Carl Towns. Carl Anthony Towns. Well, I should go back and look at the biggest steals of the draft. Nikhil now they, now, they, they, he getting traded to the Knicks. It's not bad, bro, because now Nikhil is in the is a really good role player. They were on top of that. Now, he ain't the star that maybe 33% of GM start, but he's a really quality player. 32% uh, uh, thought he was going to be a star? He ain't the star? At number 17? Star that maybe 33% of GM start, but he's a really quality player. Not still, not a star. That's a steal. Somebody said Nicholas Claxton. That's a good get, man. The year before that. 27% of people said Shea was the biggest steal. You got, give, give okay, G, some G, you know what they're talking about. Okay. For these dudes that said that, because that's that's right. And even at the third overall pick, people were like, Luca's too low. Luca's too low. Somebody said the biggest steal of the draft was DeAndre Aiden. He went one. He went the earliest a single person can't go. It's insane. He said he's a steal. He went number one overall. What you mean he's a steal? <laughs> what was wrong with these GMs? I said Dennis Smith Jr. So these GMs be crazy, bro. Whoever this seven percent is, I said Donovan Mitchell. Congratulations, you got yourself one. Uh, we also see OG and Anobi at twenty three. You were right there. Jason Tatum at three, even though it is three. That's not really wrong. Dejounte Murray at twenty nine. Yeah, you got that right. Man. You got Harry Ellison. Oh, none of these dudes are in the league anymore. Yeah, like Chris Dunn and Dejounte. Tough. Somebody said Pascal at twenty seven. Whoa, that's cool. That's great. And Zuba, they got Zoo. Zoo. That's a good GM right there. Anyway, this year they said Justice Winslow, Bobby Portis, who is a good one. Um, Out the league, Man Moody. Kabari Parker, who'll be the best in five years. Joel B did get 21% of the vote. Somebody said Doug McDermott. I wish. <laughs> I, <laughs> wish. I remember him. Rodney Hood, Zach Levine at 13. is not bad. So, I mean, I can sit here all day. The best rookie in five years of this class, they said it was going to be... Victor Oladipo! Victor Oladipo, when he coming back? Honestly, Bro, I'm a team at the sign him. For injuries, it probably would have been VO. Oh, my God. Some GM said Giannis. Who is this guy? Who is the guy that thought that Giannis was going to be best in five years? Because obviously, he's from the future. That dude was 130 pounds soaking wet coming out of Greece. Couldn't even dribble. And one GM was like, that's the guy that's going to be the best. That's the guy. Somebody Are you crazy? That's, that's the, the guy. Right it's like, I mean, I know it's crazy. I had a story back in 2018, bro. I was in 10th grade. And me and my friend talking about football. I said, wait till you see Patrick Mahomes play. This is back when he was a backup to Alex Smith. And I said, wait till you see Patrick Mahomes play. And my friend was like, who? 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 I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. I knew all along. I saw, I saw his combine workout. I saw his little, uh, uh, what's it called? The Pro Day. That's what it's called. I think that's what, that's what it's called. Pro Day. I said, yeah, he the one. He's special. He's going to be special. I saw him throw that football. I said, oh, my gosh. It's a true story. The biggest steal? Dead ass. Wow. I tell no lies. I wish we get to see the ballots because I want to know who this man is that said that because I want to shake his hand because he obviously knows what the hell he's talking about.
The best five in the There's a 2012 draft. Or 2012 13 season. Years will be Anthony Davis. AD. Sure. Best player in five years. AD, rookie of the year. Um, um, good there. Five years, Kyrie Irving. You give them the green light there. And then John Wall in this year. So, again, they have some hits. They have some misses. But yeah. it's always interesting as we get back to uh, Reed Shepard. Again, this is not one of those classes with a star player up top. So, I guess we'll have to wait and see. This year's biggest deal, Bub Carrington, Devin Carter, Johnny Furphy. I'm not a draft guy, so Who? I can tell you, I do like that Montez Wazellas is here, though. Shout out to the hey. best international no, player. You're a Bulls fan. Almost 90% says Yoke. Best player not in the NBA, Sasha Vazenkov, who's no, who was there last year, but no longer. Best oh, Meritich. I remember, man, he used to play for the Bulls. Meritich. He can shoot the three. But I mean, nothing else, though. That's why he's overseas. With all due respect. Player in basketball was Victor with Miyama already. And I've said this before. I didn't know if I was going to give him the number one spot. Where's Rudy? Where's Rudy? No, <laughs> he's tied for number two. <laughs> defensive player of the year, not even the best defensive player in the NBA. It's crazy. These GMs are crazy. These GMs even don't even like you, Rudy. These GMs don't even like you, Rudy. You're tied for second. You're not even second place. You're tied for second. Dang, Rudy. I do believe he's, I think he's the most impactful defensive player. And it's hard for me to get to saying that that makes him the best. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's where my head is at right now. Then perimeter defenders, you got Drew Holiday first. Interior will be with Miyama, of course. Drew Holiday getting old, too. How are you still locking people up, bro? You old ass still locking people up? It was, it's Giannis. And I'm sad that Bam is down here for it. I think Bam is the most versatile in the NBA, but I'm not mad at Giannis either. Best defense should be the Celtics. And then we get to the coach and stuff. All you need to know is that it's a crime that Eric Spolster has zero coach of the years when the league is respecting the hell out of him. 69% of the GM saying that he's the best coach. The year before that, it was 73%. I think he got the year before that as well. So pretty unanimous that Eric Spolster is the best coach in hoops. He's also maybe the best manager and motivator. Tyron Lue, the best X's and O's adjustment guy. Best offense is Rick Carlisle. Best defense is Spolster again. The best newcomer is Coach Bud. And then the best assistant is Micah Nori, who we saw in the playoffs last year, and Sam Cassell, who I think will get it. I love Micah Nori. You ever seen Micah Nori interviews, bro? You seen his interviews during the games? Between, like, this year. Like, it's something else. He know, he, know how to, he know how to come. He come with them metaphors. He know how to use them metaphors. No. And then Chris Paul might be a coach one day. They always say Chris Paul is always most fun teams to watch. The, the Pacers. Pacers. I mean, it's hard. Halibacon and the Pacers on the most fun team? I thought it would probably be the Warriors. They got 10 percent time for third. The Nuggets, eh. And right, they got Russ now, so that number going to go up. The Thunder, eh. Eh. He said the Celtics are seven. <laughs> the Celtics are seven. number five at 7%. <laughs> they the NBA champions. They're not the most fun one. They like the Spurs. They compare them like the Spurs. You know, when the Spurs win all them championships, like every other year, bro, no one no one wanted to watch them. He said, damn, they just born. He's just born. I don't want to watch them. They're born and old. <laughs> Not to say they're fun because they are this run and gun fast offensive team. OKC's up there as well. And then we got home court advantage, of course. I mean, they're my Mile High City for a reason. They lost game seven. And then they go home building. Up by 20 plus. No. It's gotta be Memphis, right? It gotta be Memphis. Has to be Memphis. Most efficient offense prediction is gonna be the Celtics. Toughest team to predict is the Lakers. And as always, this has been like for the last but like the past three seasons, it's been in Lakers. I, my podcast is coming back. I rebranded it. It's now called Small Ball with Kenny Beecham. And my first episode, I'm dealing with all 30 teams to some capacity. And I would agree with this. The Lakers are one of those teams where like the over-under is 42 and a half. Well, I feel pretty good about saying I trust them to win. They're going to win 42 and a half games. They're going to win 42 and a half games. That's, what, that's how much they're going to win. They're going to win 42 and a half games and lose 39 and a half. That's their record. I don't know how the, how the half is going to come in, but they're going to do it. They're going to be the first NBA team maybe in history to win 42 and a half games. Could they be a top six seed? Or will 43 wins just put them as a seventh seed again or so on and so forth? So I can agree with this. But I also agree with these two teams. Like the Pelicans made an adjustment to go get DeJounte Murray. I wouldn't be surprised if they made the playoffs, but I also wouldn't be surprised if they were in the play-in. The Rockets are a good team, but they are just unfortunate to be in the Western Conference where there are 11 other really good teams. So will this young team be the one to take the jump of other teams? Settled yeah, down? they were 41. I think they were 41 and 41 last year. They didn't even make the play. Yikes. Yikes. If you had there in the East, you would have been in the playoffs, bro. You would have easily been in the playoffs. They were in the East. Yikes. No, most promising young core has to be OKC. Duh. Most athletic is Anthony Edwards. Athletic, most athletic. What a job.
Oh, it's number four. Who else has? Where's Spidey at? Where's Spidey? Come on. I know Spidey get old, but he still can get up there now. Come on. Uh, who else? Where's Russ? I, like I said, I know he's old, but he can still get up there now. You saw what he did to Luca in the playoffs. <laughs> Come on now. It's going to be Steph Curry as always. Duh. The fastest player is De'Aaron Fox. Fox. Second year running. Steph Curry's the best. Steph Curry. Duh. Him and Klay Thompson. It's kind of interesting that it's not unanimous. But some of these dudes they mentioned, Desmond Bain is really good there too. Mikel Bridges can be really good. Mikel Bridges moves without the ball. See him McCollum moves without the ball. There as well. So I guess I'm not too mad at it. But he's Steph Curry. I feel like every shooting competition, anything to do with shooting, my vote is Steph Curry. Uh, best passer, Yoke. Okay. Best leader is Steph Curry as well. Best leader? Oh, LeBron's a tie for second. Where's Russ at? Where Russ is a leader? Where's Anna? Anna's a leader. Did you see the starting five documentary? Who else? Where's Spidey at, bro? We let the class in the second round for the first time ever without LeBron. Well, where are they at? Um, last year was Bron. Bron is now down to 23%. You the fell off, bro, bro. Most versatile player in the entire NBA is going to be Giannis. Highest basketball IQ. I think all of these guys deserve a vote. Um, even a young man. Tyrese Halliburton being there. He's just one vote, but that's pretty interesting. Um, game on the line. Who do you want taking a shot? After the Olympics, I'm surprised it's not higher than 40. Wrong. Andre Iguodala. You're wrong. It's Andre Iguodala. What are you I'm doing? Like Martin Rosen get a vote. Shea get a vote. Kyrie get a vote. Even Jamal Murray. Two game winners in the finals. So that's cool. And then lastly, what rule would you change? And it has to do with roster construction. Of course. Basically, everybody is saying that the second apron stinks. And yep. Because uh, it's harder for us to do our job. Which yep. I kind of agree with. As a yeah, of course. I need like two more years of sample size. So, um, yeah, let me know what you think, man. NBA GM survey. The 30 GMs that we trust to build our teams. That they, that they cook. I don't know. Let me know. Shout out Kenny Beecham.